Hey friends, my name is C and you're watching e, Mr. Easy. And welcome back to a new video for A11 for the Max and 3. We have a new topic for Core P1 for Chapter 4 or Topic 4 for Roots of Polynomials. And we'll first look into Core Point 1 for the Roots of a Quadratic Equation for the Rules and Examples video. And we'll look into some introduction, but before we get into it, don't forget to leave a like, subscribe, and ring the notification button to on any future videos. And we'll first look into the introduction. So the purpose of this chapter, or the roots of polynomials, is to understand the underlying relationship between the roots of a polynomial and the coefficients of each term. So here we have an introduction. So here we have a graph of p of x, and let's say p of x is equal to x squared minus 3x minus 10, and therefore this can be factorized into, we know that this can be factorized into x minus 5 and x plus 2, and the roots are at 5 and minus 2 like so. And the sum of the roots is basically minus 2 plus 5, which is 3. And we can see that we can notice that it is a negation or the opposite of the x coefficient. See, it costs 3, and this is minus 3. And the product of the roots is minus 2 times 5 equals minus 10. And we can notice that, oh sorry, it's a typo. We can notice that it is a constant term in the polynomial. See, minus 10 and minus 10. So therefore, in short, if alpha, if, if alpha and beta are the roots of a quadratic equation ax squared plus bx plus c equals 0, then ax squared plus bx plus c equals, uh, equals a times x minus alpha times x minus beta, and expand it to get this expression right here, and this is equal to ax squared minus a times a plus uh, alpha plus beta x plus a times alpha beta, and therefore b equals minus a uh, times alpha plus beta, and c equals a times a times alpha times beta. So this looks really complicated, so this is just like a short summary. But here's what, this will make it much clearer. So here's the sum of sum and product of quadratic roots. So here we have the polynomial, the quadratic polynomial of ax squared plus bx plus c, and the roots are at alpha and beta. The sum of roots, where alpha and beta are the roots, is equal to alpha plus beta equals minus b over a, where b and a are basically the coefficients. And the sum of possible product of pairs of roots, or basically the sum of product of pairs of roots, is equal to alpha beta equals c over a, where c and a are the coefficients. And the sum of products of triples, there's, uh, there's not, there's, it's not applicable because there's only two roots, but this will be relevant if you were to look into the sum and product of cubic roots, which we'll look into it in the next few lessons. So here we have a quick example right here, and I'll change this because this is actually the wrong equation. It's x squared plus 2x minus 3, like so. So we know that this can be factorized into x plus 3 and x minus 1, right? And therefore the roots are equal to minus 3 and 1. We can see that the sum of roots using just the, the, uh, the, the, the roots of polynomials uh, theory is equal to alpha plus beta equals minus b over a, which is equal to minus 2 over 1, which is minus 2. And n is minus 2. What I can see here. And the product of the roots alpha beta is equal to c over a, which is equal to, now n is minus 3, not just 3. So minus 3 over 1, and that gives us minus 3, and n is minus 3, because minus 3 times 1 is minus 3. And it is quite magical. And here we have some roots of a quadratic equation examples. The roots of the quadratic equation 2x squared minus 5x minus 4 equals 0 are alpha and beta. Without solving the equation, find the values of these four expressions right here. So we know that alpha plus beta is basically the sum of roots, and this can be written as the sum of alpha, just the sum of roots. And this is equal to minus b over a, minus b over a, which is equal to minus b, in this case it's minus 5, and a is 2 minus 5 and 2, which is equal to 5 over 2. Oops, 5 over 2, like so. And this part B, alpha beta. Alpha beta is basically the sum or the product of uh, the product pair of the roots, which is equal to C over A, which is equal to minus 4 over 2, and minus 4 over 2 will be equal to minus 2, like so. And for part C, 1 over alpha plus 1 over beta. So we, we now have to just basically um, simplify this, uh, these two fractions first. So 1 over alpha plus 1 over beta. 
we can make the, both denominators the same by times in the left by beta and times in the right by alpha. So it would be beta over alpha beta plus alpha over alpha beta. And this will get us alpha plus beta over alpha beta. And we can notice that it's basically the same as these two, right? See, this alpha plus beta and alpha beta, right? And we know that alpha plus beta is equal to 5 over 2. And alpha beta is equal to minus 2. So it's basically 5 over 2 times minus 1 over 2. Uh, sorry, minus 1 over yeah, minus 1 over 2. And this gets us minus 5 over 4, like so. And alpha plus a uh, party alpha alpha squared plus beta squared. So we can notice that we can't just square the thing straight away because that's not how it works. And we can notice that this actually occurs occurs when it's at alpha plus beta squared. Right? Let's just expand this. So alpha plus beta squared will be equal to alpha squared plus beta squared plus two alpha beta. Right? So right, because if you were to expand it, it will be true. And therefore we can now just um we can now just rearrange it alpha squared plus beta squared. So alpha squared plus beta squared is equal to oops, plus beta squared is equal to alpha plus beta squared minus two alpha beta. And we have what alpha plus beta is. It's basically five over two from here. Five over two. So therefore this is just five over two squared minus two. Alpha beta is minus two. So it's just minus two. So let's just simplify this. Just put it into the calculator. Five over two squared is equal to twenty-five over four minus two times minus two, and this gets us forty-one over four as a fraction, because fractions are our friends. Forty-one over four, and that's the answer. And in the last example, the root of the quadratic equation a x squared plus b x plus c equals zero are alpha equals minus three over two and beta equals 5 over 4. Find the initial value for a, b, and c. So it's basically working backwards. And we know that the, um, we know that alpha plus beta is the sum of the roots, and this equals to minus b over a. So alpha is equal to minus 3 over 2, and beta is equal to 5 over 4, and we know this equals minus b over a, and therefore minus b over a, Minus b over a equals, I'm just putting in my calculator, 5 over 4, minus 3 over 2, and this gets us minus 1 over 4, and rearranging everything, minus, and rearranging everything, we can just cancel out the negative, and this will get us a equals 4b, so a equals 4b for the first part, and we know that alpha beta is the sum of the pairs of the roots, it's equal to c over a, right? c over a. And we can we know that um we know that alpha beta is equal to minus three over two times five over four equals c over a and therefore c over a is equal to minus fifteen over eight. So minus fifteen over eight, right? And we can now basically just rearrange the equation as well. So eight c equals minus fifteen a. Right, so and now we have to just find the coefficients for a, b, and c. And first, it looks impossible, but actually that's a really nice way to solve these kind of questions. So because these kind of questions, we can basically, um, this, if we were to like times by 2, it will be the same, right? Times by 3, times by 4, times by 43, or whatever, it will still be the same equation because it's basically this number, it's a scalar, right? A scalar multiple of the whole equation. So what this means is that we can basically just set, just set a as anything. Let's set a as like let's say one, right? If a were to be one, we can then we can then solve the corresponding b value and c value, and this will be both in a fraction, right? And we can now times everything by the denominator to to like get rid of all the denominator, and therefore we get a, b, and c. So this sounds complicated, but I'll just talk through it. So let's say a equals one. That means b equals 1 over 4, right? And let's say if a equals 1, then c equals minus 15 over 8, like so. And now we can just substitute a equals 1, b equals 1 over 4, and c equals minus 15 over 8 into the original equation. 
So this will get us a is 1, so it will be x squared plus 1 over 4x minus 15 over 8 equals 0. We can now multiply everything by 8 to get 8x squared plus 2x minus 15 equals 0. And that's the answer, and it's pretty magical. So besides, sub uh, besides substituting a equals 1, we can do it as a equals 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, or whatever number, as long as you get into the equation into the equation where it's basically in this form. And the question specifically states to find the integer values of a, b, and c. So that's basically a hint for you to know that um, whatever you can substitute whatever number in. But whatever the final equation is, it has to be an integer, integer value. And that's the final question. And that's it for this video for the 4.1 of the root of a quasi equation. And I hope you find it useful and helpful. And if you did, please leave a like and subscribe and bring the notification like button and on any future videos. And if you have any questions or any comments regarding my channel or my YouTube or my Instagram, you can leave them down below and I'll reply to them. And check out my social media in the description for example YouTube or LinkedIn or Instagram. And if you need any learning resources or any teaching resources, you can check out my website in the description or you can type it out in your browser at www.yemisteasy.com And I hope you'll find it useful and helpful and I'll see you all in the next video which will be 4.1 for the roots of a quadratic equation for the questions video which will be fun and interesting with our new skill that we learned in this video But anyways, I hope you'll find it useful and helpful and I'll see you all in the next video but Until then, stay safe and... Happy learning.